different today? Well, sadly, it's not church, is it really? Uh, not because you're not in the building, but because we can't gather together. So let's open our spiritual eyes and see where we are gathered together. In Revelation, God gives John a glimpse into heaven. John sees the Lord Jesus in all his glory. And he also sees a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. That is where church is. That's where you will be, where I will be one day. Around the throne in heaven. That's where you and I belong. And God has gathered us around his word and today, we, he will speak to our hearts and minds by his spirit and through his word. So let's affirm the truths that God has taught us about himself as we say the creed together. Would you like to say that with me? Can you show me on the screen, please? Ah, here we go. Good. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Apostolic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the center of the creed, the center of the creed is the Lord Jesus. Jesus who is mine forevermore. So let's sing together the song Christ is mine forevermore.
Friends, how great it is to rejoice in what God has done for us and that Christ is mine forevermore. And uh, can you see yourself around the throne? Um, that'd be cool, won't it? Be longing to look forward to that time. Uh, okay. Uh, so all of us, uh, adults, youth and children, all of each us know that we've chosen to follow our own desires rather than putting them to death. So let's confess our failure to follow Christ as we ought. And let's say this confession together. Will you join me? Heavenly Father, we praise you for adopting us as your children and making us heirs of eternal life. In your mercy, you have washed us from our sins and made us clean in your sight. Yet we fail to love you and serve you as we should. Forgive us our sins and renew us by your grace, that we may continue to grow as members of Christ, in whom is our salvation. Amen. Our Heavenly Father wants us to know that we are his children and are secure in him forevermore, just as we've sung. Hear these words that God has given us in John's first letter to assure us. The one who has the Son has life. The one who doesn't have the Son of God does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Uh, as uh, God's children all of us, let's come to our Heavenly Father and then pray to him. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, each week we're exploring another colour of our God's character. Uh, this week in Kids Pray, we realise that God is unchanging. What we mean by that is that God is not kind one day, then grumpy the next. He does not make a promise one day and then forget all about it. God has shown us that he is faithful, dependable, powerful, loving, trustworthy and true. God does not change. He is unchanging in his goodness and mercy and grace and kindness. Great reasons to rejoice in him. Our memory verse this week comes from James chapter 1 verse 17. Uh, our God is stable. He never changes. There's four words for the memory verse. Our God is stable. He never changes. Will you join with me in saying this prayer in which we thank God for who he is in his character being unchanging? Let's say this together. You are an unchanging God 
with human love and, and forgiveness. The sea changes and everything else, but you are always the same dependable Father. Thank you that you are always to be found through Jesus and the way to you never changes. We pray that everyone will know you and your love forever and ever. Amen. Uh, Rachel uh, will lead us in our other prayers, so I'll hand over to Rachel. Right, good morning, everyone. Let's continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, mighty God, loving Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for the opportunity to meet together. We praise you that you are the one and only God of this universe, and we stood in awe of your power as storms ripped through our area this week. The heavens declared your glory. The skies proclaim your work, yet your grace kept us safe. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that amongst all the uncertainty in our world, that we can put our trust and hope and confidence in you, our fortress and our strength. As we start to recover from COVID-19 and its far reaching impacts, may we rest in the assurance that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. Please give wisdom to the leaders of our country. Please provide for those who are experiencing financial hardship and show us who we can love and support through this time. We pray for our seniors at Mac and thank God that families now have more freedom to visit loved ones in care. Thank you for the forgiveness that we have in Jesus. Please forgive us for the many times we have sinned against you this week and change us to be more like Christ. Thank you for the hope that we have in heaven where every tear will be wiped away, where there will be no more death, sadness, dying or pain. We thank you that our dear sister Anne Wardle is in heaven with you now. And we thank you for her life here on earth, for the way she quietly encouraged and served those around her, and for how she faithfully cared for and loved Arthur and her family. Please be with Arthur and her family and comfort them in this time of sadness and of grief. We thank you for our ministry team that have adapted to a different way of ministering to us. Please give them wisdom, creativity and energy to continue to preach the good news of Jesus. We pray for the people in our church family that have become disconnected during this time. Show us who they are and may we all take time this week to seek someone out who we haven't seen on Zoom and to remind them that they are still valued and loved. We continue to pray for our parish nominators, that you will guide them and give them wisdom as they seek a senior minister for our church. We pray that they will find a godly man who is passionate about Jesus and sharing the good news to our community. Father, we thank you that for most families, school returns on Monday. Praise the Lord. Please help our children to readjust to being at school and getting back into normal routines and workloads. We pray especially for those studying the HSC that you will give them clear minds and understanding as they study and learn. We pray for parents at home that they can take a breath and rest in you. We pray for teachers that you will give them strength, wisdom and patience in the busyness of yet another change this year. We pray that scripture will be allowed back in school soon. And we pray that children who have attended scripture earlier in the year will remember and call to mind the things that they have been taught. With Ramadan finishing yesterday, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in the lives of Muslims who have in some way encountered Jesus this Ramadan. Finally, in the words of Philippians 1, to all of you in the Southern Highlands who are God's holy people in Christ Jesus, including our elders and leaders, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God every time we remember you and we always pray for you, all of you with joy. We thank God for the help you gave in telling people the good news. We are sure that the good work God began in you will continue until he completes it on the day when Jesus Christ comes again. You are so close to our heart. This is because you have all played such an important part in God's grace to others. 
Now, during this time that we've been in isolation and whenever we are defending and proving the truth of the good news, God knows that we want very much to see our church family again. May we love each other with the love of Christ Jesus. This is our prayer for you, that your love will grow more and more, that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love, that you will see the difference between what is important and what is not and choose what is important, that you will be pure and blameless for the coming of Christ, that your life will be full of the many good works that are produced by Jesus Christ to bring glory and praise to God. We pray all this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Hi everyone, um, it's telling me I can't start my video, so I'm hoping that you can hear me and maybe Tim can start my video <laughs> at the church, but regardless, you can hear my voice, so that's all that matters. Um, I'm just here with a quick announcement before the um, All Age Talk, which is a special and different All Age Talk today. Um, we have Colin Buchanan coming to give the All Age Talk today. Um, but before that happens, oh, here we go. There we go. Um, before that happens, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, little snippet of uh, Sunday Kids today. We have moved on. We're studying the book of Exodus and we are looking at Moses and uh, his life and what uh, happened with him. And the exciting thing about God being unchanging is that the the God who was with Moses and uh, the Israelites all the way back at that end of the Bible uh, is the same God who is with us today because he is unchanging. So we are going to go to Colin and he is going to do a talk and finish with a song and then it will be time for Kids Church today where the kids will learn about Moses. So thanks everyone and here's Colin. G'day, I'm Colin, and I'm uh, looking at some old photos of me. And uh, one thing I'll say for sure, I've changed. I really have. And you've probably changed too. And have a look at this. This is a photo of me with my mum. And there I am, a tiny little baby. Then you get a bit bigger. I've got another photo here. This is me, a bit bigger. We're on holidays there. And that's with my dad. And I could feed myself. I was a bit bigger then. I might have sat down, read books and played. And then I got bigger again. This photo was taken when I went to school. I was big enough for school in that photo. I'm not in my uniform. I'm still in my pajamas. And there's another photo here, changed even more. Do you think I have? <laughs> I, I've changed. Have you changed too? I'm sure you have. Like when you get clothes out and they don't fit anymore because you've got bigger. But you know, we don't just change on the outside, we change on the inside as well because some days are good days and then some days mm, are bad days. And Sometimes our friends change too, don't they? Like, maybe we don't get on with friends like we used to. Hmm. And things change around us. Maybe you've moved house or even had to move to another country. What else changes? Hmm. Maybe when someone you love gets sick or has to move away or you can't see them. So many changes. But there's someone who never changes. Do you know who that is? I think you might. All right, I'm going to read a verse from the Bible. It's from Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, I am the Lord and I do not change. God doesn't change. God wasn't small once and now he's big. God doesn't grow. God doesn't change his mind. 
God doesn't learn anything. He doesn't get old or die. He doesn't have mm, good days, mm, bad days. The Lord never changes. And because God doesn't change, all he does is good. When he makes a plan, he keeps his plan. And you know what? The Bible says something about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus doesn't change. Everything else changes. We change, and our friends change, and the world around us changes. But Jesus never changes. And when it feels like, oh, too much has changed, everything's different, remember this. When you are scared, when you are sad, trust God. When you've done something that is bad, trust God. Just think a prayer and he will hear. God always cares. He's always near. His love will never disappear. Trust God. Right. I want to sing a song about how God never changes. Let me see. It's uh, from Malachi. Remember that verse? Chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Lord and I do not change. All right. Got my click trim, got the song. All right. Here we go. <laughs> change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. God chose Israel long and long ago, and when Israel sinned, God never let to and ready I am the Lord and I do not change I am the Lord and I do not change kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall but the Lord don't change at all no the Lord don't change at all there are times we feel like we could walk on air but when that feeling's gone God's love will still be there. Listen to him. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. He keeps every promise and his word is true. What he is, he says, and what he says, he'll do. Ready? Listen to him. I am the Lord, and I do not change. I am the Lord, and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. The Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all rise and kingdoms fall. He wisely, wonderfully holds them all. Blessed are all who on him call, because the Lord don't change at all. He doesn't change. All right. I think it's time for us to pray. I'll close my eyes. You can close them too to help us think about what we're, what we're saying as we talk to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, how amazing you are. Your word says you have no beginning and you have no end and you do not change. We praise you because we are weak. We see change all around us. We see ourselves change on the outside and the inside. But you are always the same. So we call on you our rock and our deliverer. And Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, no matter what. And we pray these things in our Saviour, 
Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> Good. Well, I think that's enough of the photos, so uh, finish up there. No, can we have no more, no more photos? Hey, I said no more photos of me when I changed, all right? No more, no more, please. Whoa, that, <laughs> can we stop? No more, no more photos. Um. Uh, good day, friends. Anglican Aid uses your donations and partnership to bring real substantial change in the living conditions in underdeveloped parts of the world. The Archbishop has appointed Tim Swan as CEO and he introduces him to us in the next ministry spot with Anglican Aid. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank you for allowing me to share with you for a few moments about the work of the Archbishop of Sydney's Anglican Aid. Uh, you may know of it as the Archbishop of Sydney's Overseas Aid Fund, uh, which was established last century and uh, helps provide funds and resources for the vulnerable people around the world and also in our own diocese. I'm particularly excited to introduce to you the Reverend Tim Swan. Tim, I first knew as a missionary in Chile. He spent 10 years there with CMS. He understands what it's like to see the developing world and how the needs for resources are so important. Tim has now become the new director of Anglican Aid. And I thought it'd be good for you to meet him and he can tell you something about the exciting projects we have for the Archbishop of Sydney's Anglican Aid. Sorry, are you there? to be able to take up the leadership of Anglican Aid because it is such a wonderful mission and aid organisation. One project which has amazed me is called Heading North in rural North Ethiopia. We are putting in safe drinking water, providing communities with water so that their health is improving. Rates of sickness and death are falling. We're also involved in community leadership training with community leaders and also the church leadership. And this is all resulting in churches being planted amongst hitherto unreached tribal groups. Anglican Aid is also sponsoring hundreds of Bible college students across Africa, strengthening the future of the church. These are the sorts of projects that Anglican Aid is involved in with uh, partners that we know and we trust. And that's why I'm excited to be starting as the CEO of Anglican Aid. And I'm also excited to invite you to partner with Christians around the world through Anglican Aid that we might let grace flow. Last year, I had the privilege of visiting two of the schools that Andy and Aid have been supporting over the years. Uh, one is Bunda Girls School, and another is a primary school. I also met some theological students at Bunda Bible College, whom Andy and Aid are supporting. How wonderful to know that we're investing in the lives of young people and in the lives of clergy to bring the living word of God to their people. I'm hoping that you'll be able to consider carefully and prayerfully to give to the work of Anglican Aid. Most of our work is tax deductible, but of course some of our work is non-tax deductible. You might also consider giving to that ministry fund because that helps us support theological students in developing countries. Whenever you give, know that the money you give will go to the right cause. We're indebted to you for your continuing support for Anglican Aid. And if you've not given before, let 2020 be the year to give, even despite COVID-19. Uh, I'd like to pray as, uh, for, him, uh, for Anglican aid at this time as us who are just particularly heard of this uh, announcement. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Tim Swan and his commitment to serve those in underdeveloped parts of our world. We ask that you would use Anglican aid 
to show the love of Jesus to many and that the work done through Anglican aid will open a door of opportunity for the gospel. Please use us to be involved in this partnership as we are able. Amen. Friends, Paul's always understood that uh, wherever he ended up, that is where God wanted him to be. Confident in this truth, when he was in prison, Paul used his time for gospel purposes. Today we start exploring one of his prison letters, the letter to the Philippians. And Jan is going to read this for us now, and I'll lead us in a prayer first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have caused all scripture to be written for our spiritual nourishment and instruction. And so we pray today and ask that you would speak to our hearts and minds, bringing on us the conviction of your spirit, and so to work in us that we respond in repentance and faith. Amen. Thank you, Jan. Good morning. The reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So, friends, Matthew's going to uh, preach for us, and he'll be opening up this letter for us right now. Good morning, friends, and it's great to be with you this morning. We have the wonderful privilege of looking together at Paul's letter to the Philippians. Philippians is a letter that is all about joy and rejoicing in the Lord. And don't, isn't it so that we want to know more of the joy of the Lord in our Christian living? I know I do, and I'm looking forward very much to looking at Philippians with you. We've been doing this throughout the weeks uh, in our Zoom meetings on a Tuesday and Thursday morning. And I just want to encourage you uh, over the next to grab the, um, the devotions, there's a, there's a few here for this week, and also the, the Bible study notes that have been prepared uh, for you, and I hope that you'll find them really helpful as we dive into the letter together and spend time benefiting from God's Word as we spend Sunday by Sunday looking at it. By way of background, uh, Paul went to Philippi during his second missionary journey. And the Lord graciously opened the hearts of a number of people, and so a church was born. But now it's 61 AD, and he writes to the church at Philippi under arrest in Rome. He wants to encourage the Philippians to remain steadfast in the gospel. No doubt they may have been discouraged because they heard that Paul is under arrest, and perhaps they thought the gospel isn't advancing. 
But Paul writes to assure them that the gospel is not chained. In fact, as we will see in subsequent times, the gospel advances despite the chains of Paul. What is remarkable about this letter, friends, is Paul's joy seems to override all the circumstances of life. And isn't it true that there are so many things that can rob us of our joy? It might be that there is an inadequate understanding that we have that God is in control of everything, even our lives. Perhaps our joylessness is the result of a lack of prayer. Or perhaps we have a high in some experience, but then we hit rock bottom like the Monday mornings of life and our joy just sinks. Perhaps there are circumstances in life that are just too difficult and they just rob you of joy or ingratitude or that you forget who you are in Christ. One of the things I've been reading about is it's not so much that you should listen to yourself in life, but talk to yourself, remind yourself that you are a person for whom Christ died, that you are a recipient of grace and God is with you by his spirit. We can get so easily dissatisfied, can't we? And we can fear the future. There is, there is a, so many things, so many things, friends, that can rob us of our, our joy. And so no doubt at the moment, as we think about COVID-19 and the effect that this has had on so many of us, there's a sense of despondency perhaps and despair because we can't be together and to in, encourage one another to know the joy of the Lord. And so, friends, I'm so excited to be able to uh, spend some time with you this morning as we begin to look at Paul's letter to the Philippians. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 4 under the theme of gospel bonds. And let's have a look at it together. And you'll see at first up, there's a greeting. There's a greeting. And it says there that Paul and Timothy are servants of Christ Jesus. Now, Paul and Timothy are partners. And isn't it true as you live for the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it true how good it is that there is someone at least who you would consider almost a spiritual partner in the gospel? Maybe it's a spouse or maybe it's a prayer partner. Well, for Paul, one of his spiritual partners was Timothy, and they were bonded for the cause of the gospel. We see Paul, how Paul describes them here as servants of Christ Jesus. Now, this is a bit more than just simply uh, doing odd jobs here and there like a servant would, but it's actually more about that they belong to Christ Jesus, that Christ is their master. Now, we might think of a master being a bit hard and tyrannical, but think for a minute with me that it is Christ Jesus who is their master because this master gave up his life for them. This master suffered for them, suffered for their sin, died on the cross in their place. And so Paul and Timothy are wanting to say to the Philippians that our, our uh, person, who we are, is slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bonded to doing what he wants us to do and want to please him. And isn't that a great reminder for us this morning, friends, that your whole life, every minute and every second, whatever you are doing, you want to see yourself as a person, as a servant for the master's business. In all the responsibilities that you have, be a servant of Christ Jesus. And then he writes to them, he calls them saints. And that's an interesting word, isn't it? Did you know, friends, that as you belong to Jesus Christ, you are a saint? That is, you're a holy one, that you are set apart. You are a believer. You are one who has received the forgiveness of sin. You are one of, the, one of God's people. You are a saint in Christ Jesus. That's to, who, to whom you belong in Christ Jesus. And he says they're at Philippi, in the church there at Philippi. It's exciting, isn't it, as we look at this, or it says overseas and deacons. So over the last 10 years or so for the church at Philippi, there's been growth. So much so that they need people in responsibility of uh, leadership, uh, responsibility of pastoral care for the, for the, for the church there, overseas and deacons. And friends, you cannot pray enough for those who are over you in the Lord's. I value so much the people who pray for 
the, the ministry team here at Mittagong as we seek to pray for you as well. Please pray that we would be servants of the body of Christ at Mittagong and the Southern Highlands. And then we see the, the grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, grace and peace are probably the two highest hallmarks of what it means to be uh, people who belong uh, to Jesus Christ, that we are people of grace, that we would experience the grace of God more and more in our lives, that we would experience the peace of the Lord in spite of everything that's going on around us, that we would know his peace in our lives and to be able to share that peace and grace with one another. For it comes from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, when we get back together to meet as his people, we are looking forward, aren't we, to the time when we will be able to greet one another. We don't want to just simply greet those we particularly get along with. That's a, that's a lovely thing to be able to do, isn't it? But we want to greet, it says, to all the saints. And as people turn up and share in fellowship together, we look around and we see that these are people, every single one, for whom Christ has made a saint. And that's how much God values each one of us. And so as we, I trust, when we do catch up with one another, isn't it good that we may be able to just remind one another that we are who we are by grace and that we be the peace of the Lord from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he continues into the, uh, the letter. We see here that he begins with, I thank my God every time I remember you. So here we have some thanksgiving as part of this gospel bond that Paul enjoys and is just so joyful in. I thank my God every time I remember you. It's as though he recollects he's sitting there or sitting somewhere in chains and he remembers them and he is just full of joy for them. He thanks God. And notice that he has this personal relationship with God. I thank my God every time, he says, I remember you, Philippians. Then he says in verse 4, in all my prayers for all of you, he says, I am always praying with joy. Isn't that a great thing to be able to say, isn't it? We may be able to think about it, the people at Mittagong and to say, I'm so thankful for them and I pray with joy for their well-being. I pray with joy. And you'll see some of the reasons why he is so thankful and why he prays with joy there. He says there, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. It's like fellowship. It's like these are people for whom Paul values because they are people who are standing side by side with him cause of Christ and making him known. I just think it's such a wonderful thing to think about the body of Christ and we are together trying to make the Lord Jesus known in our community and we are seeking to make Jesus known further afield as we support our link missionaries as they in their various contexts make the Lord Jesus known. And so as you come to praying about the ministries the opportunities as we seek to make the Lord Jesus known. We want to pray with joy and be with and have thankful hearts for each one. And just by way of an opportunity that we're hoping to uh, let people know about, you'll see there this little uh, picture of the course we're going to run called Christianity Explored. It's a, uh, a course that we're hoping to run in mid-June. And we're hoping to let people know that they can uh, sort of in, in connect with us and uh, look at the, uh, the Zoom through the Zoom uh, platform. It's uh, for one hour for over seven weeks and we're going to be pr pr printing out some leaflets. And I just want to encourage you, if you're interested in refreshing your faith or uh, if you have a friend, uh, neighbour, someone that you think would really benefit that you've been speaking with and you think, yes, this would be a great thing to be able to invite them to. Then please uh, come along with them uh, to Christianity Explore. That will be coming up in mid-June, as I say. 
successful partnership. And there are just so many ways in which we partner together in this great cause of making Jesus known. And you see, it's from, it says, the first day until now. So really right from the very beginning, they have stuck at it. Isn't that a great incentive for us, a great encouragement that we might persevere in making the gospel known where the Lord has placed us? In verse 6, Paul says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He's confident because, you see, he knows God. He knows that God is faithful. He knows that God will finish the work in them. And friends, I want to say to you, if you have received God's spirit, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, then God is going to ensure that you will be there in the end and that he is completing the work. We are works in progress. We are continuing to grow and mature and become more like Jesus. It's not so much looking at what the church is like now, it's to be looking at what the church is becoming. And God is at work. God is doing his sovereign work in each of our lives. And we need to have the eyes of faith to see that and to encourage one another to keep at it particularly at this time when we can't meet together. Can we pick up the phone a bit more often to ring someone? Can we um, go and just visit now? Can we have a, a smaller group just to meet up to encourage one another in the gospel? The Lord is still at work and he is building his church. He is confident that the Lord will complete the work that he has begun. And then he says there that it's right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. Now, they, in a sense, just have to accept that. But Paul is just sort of laying it out there for them and saying, look, I, I, I truly, I truly long for you with the affection of Christ Jesus. I have you in my heart. It's right for me to feel this way because, you see, I want to honour God. I want to honour and please the Lord. And it's right for us to feel so bonded to one another that we might not just simply uh, treat one another for granted. We want to feel this strong bond for one another as, uh, as the people of God. He, um, he, is, uh, he has this bond. He feels so strongly for them. He wants them to know how much they mean to him. He ha they're on his heart. And he says, therefore, whether I'm in chains or... Uh, defending or confirming the gospel, all of you sharing God's grace with me. And there we have that wonderful picture of the fellowship, of the bond. They, they share together in the gospel because they share in grace. One of the members of the church was Epaphroditus, and Epaphroditus was sent by the Philippians, we think, with a generous gift to support the work of ministry that Paul was doing. And Paul writes in Philippians to say that Epaphroditus almost lost his life, so much that he was serving, so much that he was trying to make up for the service that the Philippians couldn't render to Paul. Now, when people give themselves so wholeheartedly to you, 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 you warm to them, obviously, don't you? When somebody comes alongside you and you know they are for you, you know that they are supporting you. And brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, over the years I've been here at Mittagong, it has been such a joy where people have come alongside me and said, Matthew, that's great. Keep at it. Keep serving the Lord Jesus. Keep encouraging us. Keep bringing God's word to us. As I hope, I pray that I continue to encourage you in the gospel partnership. We all share together in the grace. And that's a hallmark of the fellowship that we have, the grace and peace of God. God it is, he says, Paul. God can testify with, with me how I long for you. And isn't it true, friends, I'm sure, as you feel it today, that we long, don't we, to be together again, that we might see one another, but not just simply because we miss one another, but we have the affection of Christ Jesus. And that's an interesting thought, isn't it? That the Lord Jesus himself gives us that longing 
like his, affection for his people, for one another. That's all part of the prayer that Paul is indicating to the Philippians so that they know they are not forgotten. Well, then we come to more the content of the prayer that's coming from a thankful heart. But Paul really just opens to them, this is what I'm praying about. And you know what this prayer is really all about? Verse 9, let's just read it again. And this is my prayer, again, very personal, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord to the glory and praise of God. There is a pastor's prayer. There is a pastor's prayer for the people that he loves, that they would become more like Jesus Christ, to grow in their love for one another. This can be something that husbands and wives experience as well and pray for each other. This can be something that parents pray for their children, that they would love each other in their families, one another in the family, that, you, that your love for all the believers would grow. May each of us deepen in our love for God and each other. That's the prayer, that increased capacity to love. That's a spiritual thing that we, we just want to know that in our lives. And it says in the knowledge and depth of insight, that is that we would have a God-given insight into how to love, that we would understand what the real needs are that we have, that we would be wiser in the way that we go about loving each other, that it would be more about having com more compassion for each other rather than a cognition about what it means to love. Lord, please give them spiritual insight in order that they may know how to love what's best, the, love the best way. How is the best way to love one another, to have that perception? So that they would know what is best, that they would be able to pray on behalf of one another, that they will know what is excellent and uh, to do it. It's a prayer for spiritual discernment. And the prayer includes this theme of purity and blamelessness, authenticity, a life of integrity, the real deal, as it were, a real love, a genuineness, the character that it is all about that just is showing forth the, the, the wonderful character of the Lord. There isn't, say, an inconsistency between what we believe and how we live. And then he says being blameless, that is not to stumble, not to come into some sort of moral failure, but to pursue personal holiness and not to get ensnared by the world. How you and I live matters to God. Forgiveness of our sin doesn't give us the freedom to sin. The grace that pardons us is the same grace that must purify us to be pure and blameless. And then it says, until the day of Christ, that is, friends, to keep at it, to keep at it, that when the Lord Jesus returns, will the Lord find you loving others in our church? That is, to press on to love others without wavering, and so praying for others to keep loving each other. And then it says, with the fruit of righteousness. And you see that it comes from Jesus Christ. And it reminds me of the, the image of the vine and the branches, doesn't it? That we can produce the fruit of the Lord because we are connected to the vine. And the words of the Lord Jesus are, are our words that we want to be able to share with others. There's a sort of a practical righteousness here that we want our lives to be lived in conformity to what God wants for us. And we want to have the fruit of Christ bearing in our lives rebirth is the root and love is the fruit 
and the prayer for fruit of righteousness might be clearly seen in each of our lives. And that's what you want to pray for your brothers and sisters here at St. Stephen's to the glory and the praise of God. That's the passion. You see, it is all for the glory of God, isn't it? It is all for his praise. And that's what it is to live as a Christian, isn't it? You want to live to please the Lord. You want to honour the Lord in your daily life. And it will show him to be great. Your fruit of righteousness grows as you pray for others like this. And as you pray that the fruit of God's righteousness, that you, as you pray that prayer, you pray that it might grow in others as well, that it would all be according to the will of God. Now, friends, this has been quite a quick look over such a magnificent section of the Bible. Paul's prayer to the Philippians, Paul's prayer that they would be gospel bonded the bond of a church at Philippi that he so dearly loves, that they might know uh, the joy of the Lord. And he wants them to know that they are not forgotten, but that he prays with them, prays with thanksgiving for them because they are with him in the gospel. Friends, I want to say we are, we are together in this gospel. We are bonded together and we are, we are because of the grace of God and the peace of God, that it might be more and more abundant in our lives. And so as you, as we go into a new week, as we think about what it means to be gospel partners. And so friends, we want to uh, think on these things. We want to produce the fruit of righteousness. We want to be praying for each other that we might be uh, people to the praise and the glory of God. That is Paul's prayer for the Philippians. And so friends, as we finish up, we just want to say thank you to God that he has made us his people and that we can indeed bring glory and praise to him. And I trust that is your desire this morning, and that you might know the joy of the Lord, and it might be your strength today. Amen. G'day friends, it's uh, terrific to see that God's been at work in our life in that way, that he has bonded us together uh, in him, in the gospel, through Christ, given us such joy that we might know the peace and the grace that we share in him and that we can offer to the world. What a great blessing that is that we have that provision opportunity. I do pray that many people might come along to that course in Christianity Explored that Matthew's been uh, talking about today. What a great opportunity to invite our friends. So perhaps you have someone in mind that you could invite along to come and share in that time with us. That'd be brilliant. Uh, we're going to sing now because only a holy God would be able to do what God has done for us. Let's sing, uh, sing together.
G'day friends. Um, it's been great meeting together today and as we've been celebrating around God's word and remembering that we also are gathered there in heaven around the throne. I want to ask you just before we finish off today, you might like to uh, flick on your screen. Uh, if, you t if you move it to the left, you'll be able to see other folk who are engaged in watching this uh, presentation as well. I want to ask you, you might like to just write down, jot down some names of people. Pick someone you know, pick someone you don't know. You might like to pray for them over this coming week. That'd be lovely. If you like, you could include a prayer point on the chat line and we could uh, keep a record of that and you might like to pray for those people and about those particular matters that you'd like to pray for. Um, I know that Anne's funeral is this coming Thursday. You might like to pray particularly for Anne, the family. To pray, pray for the, the Matthew as he leads that service. Pray that it might be one that really glorifies the Lord and gives great thanks to him. And you can imagine how disappointing it will be that there will be only a small number able to gather together. If you'd like to take part in the service, you're able to get some details for the service uh, through Zoom. And uh, it'll be Zoomed, and, but you can get it from the... Uh, uh, from the funeral, from the undertakers and the notices for that in the Mac update. I'd like to close off this morning just by uh, using Paul's prayer to pray for one another. May I use that to finish the service time together. Let's pray. May your love abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what's best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Amen. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.